So we've got a slightly different repair today. This is actually my own PlayStation that's just been water damaged. We had a little bit of an incident in the house with water going all over this, and it started to sizzle. So it's not a good sign. Uh, power supply, you can see nothing happens. I have quickly checked if this has got voltage, which it does. So it needs to be opened up and repaired. So I figured this would be a good video to uh, see what's going on. Hopefully it's something just like a fuse or a blown component or something obvious. But let's just dig in and see what we find. Otherwise I won't be able to play Resident Evil 2 today. So one thing's for sure, this has never been opened before because these are really stiff screws. And then the one hidden one under the warranty sticker, which let's have a quick go at removing this without breaking it. So what I like to do to try and remove the stickers is just warm up the sticker area and just get one of the like pry tools and gently go under until you can start the peel. Oh, and that didn't work on this one. It's really fragile. And you can see it's ripping as well when I'm pulling here even gently, so. <clears throat> I don't think that's gonna be one of them stickers we could get off and put back down easy, so I'm just gonna peel it off. But usually that works quite well, and you can sort of restore the sticker without any marks. But in this case, I'm just gonna remove it. And then there's one more under this sticker. So let's have a go at this sticker, see if we can get this one peeling successfully. This one looks more like an actual sticker, so we should be able to get this one off without any fuss. You can see this one comes off much easier. And we can probably fully restore this sticker back to its original spot. And you can see there that should have come off hopefully perfect and there we go we've got the original sticker now we can reapply when we're done so some stickers work some don't just depends on the quality of the sticker and then if we get in here to have a look there's nothing really obvious that stands out straight away there's a little sign there of some water damage and the metal shield and yeah right there you can see where the damage is actually you can see it's burning all around near where the port is and this explains it because i could hear a sizzling noise when this was plugged in so something was clearly sizzling and burning inside and that'll be the place let's just take a look underneath oh yeah there you go so that's clearly going to be the issue it's formed a complete short circuit between the ground and power by the looks of it and there's all carbon deposits and black that's burnt a hole through the board but hopefully that's all this is going to be it's going to have just shorted these out so let's clean this up first and i'm just going to grind away and really try and clear this out now so that we can get a fresh connection so this is eaten through all the traces and clearly eaten through the via that goes to the other side of the board. So I'm just going to have to restore that connection now. If we pull up the schematic, if you go to retro6.wiki, scroll down and go to public files, you'll see in here I've got all the schematics to nearly every console, and if I don't have them, I'll work on getting them all. I'll just open up the PlayStation 1 schematic, go to the power input part, and we can see this magenta arrow points from the positive jack, which is the one that's burnt out, and it goes to FB001. And you can see it also goes through this component just before it. Quite clearly, that's the vias that were blown out there. So let's just bridge that with a wire now. And this will be a bit difficult to get a solder blob back onto now because the original pin is obviously quite corroded. I'm going to restore it all over to this. We've got a nice big solid connection. And I'm just going to solder a wire to here. And then wrap it around here. And it's just long enough. You'd almost think I'd measured that. And let's solder that down to 
this test pad. And that's effectively now restored the connection. So let's just clean the whole board. Now it's had water damage as well as my desk. And then the main culprit is going to be this here. And I think considering this is mine, I'm just going to remove that bottom tray. So that can't ever happen again, to be honest. And I think that'll do for my one. I could keep cleaning forever, but that'll do for now. Let's see if this actually works. Let's get the board back in, the cage back on, laser back in, and the lid back over. And now let's put the power in. And unfortunately, still nothing. So let's just measure that we're getting voltage on the system. And let's just go ground and the output of the fuse. And you can see we're getting eight volts there. We do have what looks like a fuse here. Let's see if that's good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's just pull up the schematic then. And let's track the power a little bit further because it wasn't as simple as just one short, unfortunately. So the power switch itself should receive power and then it should go to PS. Ah, there's a load of fuses. There's one, two, three, four, five fuses. So they probably blown. So we're looking for all these fuses that ultimately go into the rest of the circuit. So I probably found one. That was probably that blue one I found, but basically the power should go to the switch. So we can check that part and then to CL618. So it goes through here through the fuse, and then it should make its way down to the switch, which is here. So the switch is gonna be this one, go up, all the way up, through these vias, which is four vias, which will be those vias there. So let's just check we have continuity. There's gotta be a break somewhere. So we'll go from the wire, to the fuse, to the fuse, to the via, now we need to check the other side of the via, which is, uh, it's gonna be bearings, it's these here. So it will be attached to this. Ah, there you go. So that V is blown out as well there. So there's nothing there. So hopefully another quick fix with another wire. We have a few options. We can just move this wire to here um, or correctly let the wire go through the, um, inductor to remove noise and then back to there. So we'll do the correct fix, which is a wire from here, back over to here. So even though that via looks perfectly fine, it was obviously damaged and not usable. So we'll just strip this wire down again. Pull this trace. Go the other side and there we have the restored trace again and let's just put this back together for how quick and easy this is might as well just put it back together you literally just drop stuff in console back together and fingers crossed are we going to get power this time Get in. Right then, let's now plug in the AV port and hopefully that is going to show on screen for us. Yes, I thought it wasn't going to boot for a minute then. And of course we've got to try Resident Evil works. There's no point in playing if this doesn't work. 
yes there we go i can get back to playing versus evil so you can see that wasn't too bad there was more damage than we thought originally but ultimately it was just a short onto a metal cage that then destroyed the power supply to the rest of the system so the fix was not actually that hard to do and with having the schematic we also made it a little bit easier to quickly look at what to do so hopefully this will help one of you guys fix your own consoles if you potentially get water damage and you can see that half the time water damage isn't that bad it's always just usually fries a few components and then everything else is fine it's rarely a case of catastrophic failure that's it for this one and i'll catch you in the next